we're studying exponential functions and we're going to start with things that are called growth models. And a growth model is an equation uh, representing a population that's increasing in size or an amount that's increasing. And there are two ways to write the equation or model. Uh, the first way is when you're given a multiplier that we call the growth factor. And that's when you hear that something doubles or triples or quadruples. You hear the word grows by a factor of. That's when you're going to use this equation, which is the standard exponential equation we saw in the very beginning of the year. It's y equals a times b to the x, where a cannot equal 0 and b has to be greater than 1. And this is the thing right here that makes the amount grow, the fact that it's greater than 1. So a is the initial value, or the value at time 0, and m is the growth factor, or the multiplier. Now there's another version of the equation that uses something called a growth rate. And this is when you're not given the multiplier, but a percent increase over a certain amount of time. And this one you'll see a lot in applications that have to do with money. And its equation is a little bit different. A still can't be 0, but now instead of having the B, you have this thing that's 1 plus R raised to the x power. Oops, forgot the A. A times, uh, open parentheses, 1 plus R raised to the x. Um, where A is still the initial value at time 0, and I had to add that in there, sorry. Um, and then R is now the growth rate. That's the percent increase. And when you put that percent into the equation, you have to remember to convert it into a decimal or you have all kinds of crazy growth. Now a lot of times when you're given the model, this 1 plus r is going to be simplified into a single you know, amount. Now let's look at an example using the growth factor. So Yardley's Evil Genetic Engineering Lab has created bigger, meaner, faster breeding snapping turtles called the Mutant ST1. And if you've ever seen a snapping turtle, you know they do not need to be bigger, meaner, or faster breeding. Um, the turtle population doubles every four months, which is crazy, and six escaped to a nearby marsh. Now, for the purposes of Algebra 1, we are going to assume unlimited resources available for growth. That's what exponential growth implies, is that you have enough resources, you can grow without bound. So there's no upper limit. And that's not how the world really works. You get limited populations because of the location, the food, the resources. And that's actually something called logistic growth, which is a little bit beyond Algebra 1. Now we're going to write an equation to model the ST1's population. So I need to get the information I need from the problem. First, that they double every four months, and that six of them escaped. So that six is A, because that's how many turtles there were originally released. So six is a. What I use for the factor is going to depend on what unit I use for time. So I'm going to say t is equal to the time in years. And usually in a problem I'll specify if I want months or years or whatever. So I need to find the factor in years and I give it to you in months. So this is going to take a little bit of extra work here because I don't just give it to you. I don't say it doubles you know, every year. I say it doubles every four months. So I'm going to make a little table to figure out what my factor is in years. So t is time in years. This is the number of turtles. At year zero, I have six turtles that have been created and unleashed upon the world. And then in one third of a year, that population doubles to 12. In two thirds of a year, that population doubles to 24, and then in a single year, that population then doubles again to become a 48. So the numbers I'm interested in are these two. So if I want to find my factor in years, I have to think, well, what did I have to multiply 6 by to get 48? And that's a multiplication by 8, because I doubled 3 times, or multiplied by 2 3 times, or raised it to the third power. So my factor in years is 8. So I have my initial value, t is in time in years, this is my factor, and I can just say, you know, m is equal to the number of turtles. I have everything I need to write my equation, to model the population of the turtle 
units. I can say m equals the initial value, which is 6, times my multiplier, which is 8, raised to the t. Okay, so this equation models the tur turtle population as it doubles every four months. Now I can use my equation to answer some questions and make predictions about the turtle population. And this is where my graphing calculator comes in super handy. Now I don't have x and y, I used m and t, um, and I just have to know which one's which. m is gonna be y, t is gonna be x, and so my equation that I enter in is six times eight raised to the x power. And then I can go to my table and I can answer the question as to how many turtles there will be in five years. So if I go to the time entry of five, I get the number 196,608. So according to my model, if it holds true, then that's how many turtles I will have in five years, which is an insane number of snapping turtles. So, ew. Okay, now, I can also ask you times when populations will hit benchmarks. So when will a turtle population first reach a million? Well, here's the deal with questions like this. You're not going to give me an exact answer. You're going to give me a range. In order to find the exact time according to my model, you have to use something called a logarithm, and I am not going to teach you logarithms in Algebra 1. Instead, we are going to utilize the table function of our graphing calculator and look for between which two periods of time the turtle population will go from not being a million to being a million. And so if I scooch here, I see that the very next year, sometime in between five and six years, I'm going to get a million turtles. So you can answer the question by saying after five years, or you can say between five and six. Now, one of the great things about this calculator is that you can fine tune that range. Right now, the range is um, between years, but if I change how my table counts, see right now it's counting by one. If I have it count by 0.1, then what I can do is I can pinpoint between which tenths of a year. So really it's between 5.7 and 5.8 years that I'm gonna get the turtle population to be a million. And I can continue to fine tune this. I can say start at 5.7 and now count by hundredths. And then once again, I can scooch in my table, see how it now counts by hundredths. And I can see that it's between 5.78 and 5.79 years that my turtle population is expected to first reach a million. Now for the first check, we have the mutant ST2 population, so a second version of snapping turtle, whose population triples every year, so they don't grow quite as fast because that last population was a fiasco. And then 10 were created. And so I have three questions for you. One, what is the growth factor in years? Second, I want you to write an equation to model that new turtle's population. And finally, I want you to use your model to predict the number of turtles there will be in 10 years. One of the trickiest parts of the exponential growth model is knowing the difference between the factor and the rate. Now we've seen an example of a factor problem where there's a multiplier, and in a few minutes you're gonna see an example using a rate, but I wanna make sure you know the relationship between these two as there is a relationship between these two. Now the factor, remember, is a multiplier. Whenever in math you hear something that's like factor, it's related to multiplier, and rates are always gonna be related to some sort of percent, okay? So let's see the relationship between the two. So I have four factors and four rates that match those factors. So a factor of two corresponds to a 100% increase because if you increase by 100%, you double. A factor of three relates to a 200% increase. A factor of 1.5 relates to a 50% increase. And a factor of 1.12 relates to a 12% increase. So if I increase by 12%, my multiplier is 1.12. If I increase by 50%, my multiplier is 1.5. And the relationship, if you haven't noticed it, it is that you take the rate, 
you add one and then you get the factor. Now the reason why it's the plus one, because if you think about a 50% increase, and if I only multiply something by 0.5, I don't get an increase, I get half of that amount. So in order to account for the original amount, I have to have that one times it, and then that part right there, the 0.5, is the increase. So this one is the original amount, this 0.12 is the 12% increase. Remember that in equations, rates need to be written as decimals. You don't leave them as percentages or else here you'd get 101 uh, as your multiplier and that's an insane, insane rate. Let's look at an example now of a problem where you're given the rate. So the mutant ST3 population, the third version of the snapping turtle, increases at a rate of 35% per year and 20 were created. And now I want to write an equation to model this population. So if I say M is equal to the number of turtles and T is equal to the time in years, then my model is going to be M equals 20 because that's the initial value of, uh, of the turtle population, and then a one plus my rate written as a decimal, which is 0 0.035, and then raised to the t years. And you can simplify this to be 20 times 1.35 raised to the t. And so now let's use our model to make some predictions about the population. So the first thing is, how many turtles will there be in 13 years? Now, I don't need the table function to answer this question. I just need a calculator with exponent. So I can type in 20 times 1.35 raised to the 13 because it's after 13 years. And I'm going to get 989.39. Now, we can't have 0.39 of a turtle. So we're going to go ahead and round that to 989 turtles. Now, the next question, you do need a graphing calculator or you have to learn about these things called logarithms. And this question asks, how long does it take the turtle population to double? And so at time zero, I have 20 and then 27, and I'm looking for when it doubles. And so double of 20 is 40, and so that's between two and three years. And of course, I can fine tune that estimate by making my table count by something other than one, like by a tenth. And it looks like it doubles between 2.3 and 2.4 years. Now the cool thing about exponential growth is this doubling time is constant for this population. So between 2.3 and 2.4 years. So that means I should hit about 80 turtles in about 4.6 years. Oh hey, check it out. Between 4.6 and 4.7 years, I'm going to get about 80 turtles. And then if I add another 2.3 years to that and get 6.9, I should have double that. So if I go to about 6.9, then indeed betw between 6.9 and 7 years, I get about 160 turtles. In exponential growth, that doubling time is going to be a constant number. Now what the doubling time is depends on the rate of increase. If you have a faster rate of increase, that means you have a slower doubling time. If you have a really slow rate of increase, like you only increase by 0.01%, then you're going to have a really long doubling time. Now for the final check in the lesson, uh, let's say I have mutant ST4 populations that are modeled by this equation. T equals 70 times 1.125 raised to the X, where T is the number of turtles and X is the number of years since uh, their release. So I have three questions for you. One, what was the size of the initial turtle population? Two, what is the growth rate of that population? And three, what is the growth factor of that population?